guys, welcome to another episode of Fly Fish Dan. I am off grid today with James. We just looked up this tiny little lake on Google Earth. It looked good. We have no idea if there's any fish in it or not. We're going down this old skitter road. Oh, there's the lake. And we're gonna see if we can find some fish in this lake right over here. All right, let's do this, fish on. Hey James. Hello there. <laughs> Where are we? I was just telling everybody how far off grid we were. I mean, we're out in the middle of nowhere. I don't know where we are. <laughs> we literally picked a lake on a map, Google Earth, boink, and we're gonna see if there's any fish in there. And we brought the chainsaw, but we haven't needed it yet. Not yet, close though, because I wasn't paying attention and almost took a tree to the face. Oh, wow. <laughs> Let's go fishing. Fish on. Let's do this. Got this little skitter trail that we're coming down here. James has got pole position. Love the smell of the trees and the cedar. Gets pretty muddy. I think I've got all my zippers closed. Hopefully. Otherwise, I'll somebody I'll just leave a trail trail of fly fishing uh, gear behind us so we can find our way back. James already found the mud hole. Of course, I went first, so my good buddy <laughs> Fly Fish Dan could avoid it. Thank you. I appreciate the guide service. I can't wait to catch that next fish by your feet. You know, when you bounced off my two that I thought of them. <laughs> it's not very cinematic. Oh, oh, oh. Fish on. Fish on. Uh-oh, you lost something. I did? Yep, hold on. Back of my thing, huh? Yep. Or the front of. Thank you kindly. Welcome. The other good thing is, is when you go through something like this, I alert the bears and the cougars, and then they get the second person. <laughs> hmm. You know, like they say, you don't have to be able to outrun the bear. You just have to be able to outrun the slowest person with you. Yep. Looks like somebody here, eons and eons ago, put down these pieces of wood uh, so that we wouldn't completely fall in the mud. Look how beautiful those are. Man. Those really are. We've not seen a single fish. This is our second load down oh. here. We've not seen anything rise or move or ripple. Oh, Pretty mushy. It is. All right. Yeah, it looks like somebody uh, back, maybe back when the settlers were here, tried to build the dock. Yeah, this is definitely 1800 stuff. I'm thinking so. That's old. I could probably just lay it right here. I think this is very, very shallow. Yeah, I think it's so too. Oh, the only concern I have is we just haven't seen anything rise, but you know, it's not saying that there isn't any fish here. Come on, let there be fish here. Let there be fish. I got to double back. Right is that what that is there? Yeah. All right. Got my stuff. We haven't fallen yet, so that's a bonus. It almost behoove us to, like, you know, bring a jug of water so we can rinse ourselves off. Because yeah. we're going to have some stinky, stinky mud. We're going to be hosing some shit down. All right, ready to launch? We are in full mud. I mean, this is literally holes and just, it's like a, it's like a beaver has kind of carved this path. I'm trying my best not to pop my boat here. And any sharp sticks. Ugh. Well, I know now, I know why now this is, would not be kayakable, right? I mean, there's no way I could get that Blackfoot down here. Like no chance at all. 
And while James is getting ready, I'm going to tell you what I got here. I've got two rods with me. I've got my Sage 5 weight TCR. You can see I've got a snow cone coronamid, which is kind of my go-to on any new lake. I've never fished this lake before. And I got a San Juan worm under an Oros indicator. And then on my other rod, I brought my Sage VT2. This is an older version of a Sage rod, number three, three line. My new Colorado Orvis reel, which I love this thing. It's kind of a click and paw. And this is what I think I'm gonna start off with is this green leech on a jig hook. This always seems to be deadly in the early spring on lakes, so I'm gonna start with that first. All right, my friend, you all ready? Almost, let me see. Don't forget your apron. That's what I'm looking for. Right behind you, directly behind you. That was a big hole. Here comes that viral moment I was looking for. <laughs> <laughs> is this seat supposed to be up? Yes, you're, I think you're sitting on the backrest. I can't touch the bottom. Ooh. Wow, that is a hole. So no wonder the first settlers tried to build that dock. Does that joke kind of run its course? Oh no. <laughs> know. As long as one of us chuckles, we'll keep milking it. <laughs> Perfect. Just over here, there's like some shelter like this makeshift shelter over there it's like made out of logs and stuff it's like right there oh oh there's a bigger fish fish on oh fish off dang it oh james i had one James is hooked up. Nice. And it looks solid. And I'm caught on my other line. Don't do that. It's not that good, but it's a fish. It is a fish and I'm coming. Way to go, James. Maybe he's a monster and he's just swimming right at me. <laughs> uh, that was a pretty good bend in that rod. Yeah, he's going, he's got something with him there. Oh, fuck. No! No! <laughs> Come on, James, we gotta land one of these guys. Hmm. So sometimes when your line just has a tendency to knot up and stuff, it behooves you just to take a second and just go through and stretch it out. Because uh, clearly I'm having some line difficulty. So there's your fly fishing pro tip. When your line just wants to tangle up and knot up on itself, just take a minute and just stretch it. Give it a little stretch and it'll stop doing that. See, I can, I can land this, uh, this piece of grass, no problem. Okay, here's a way that you can test the depth of your lake and it's literally using your rod. So I'm gonna drop my rod straight down. Got an eight and a half foot rod. So I know that is it, it's at least a rod length deep here because I'm not seeing a ton of fish on top. So I am going to put an indicator on my line now and control the depth of my leech and get down there a little deeper by slow rolling it back. So that's how I usually do it. Some people put their forceps on like the line and drop them down, but I'm always worried that I'm going to lose a set of forceps doing it that way. So I just use the rod and I know there's there's no way I'm gonna lose it. So you can kind of see this is the, that's where the rod tip is made an indentation in my line already. And I'm gonna go a rod length down and see if maybe the uh, fish are cruising a little closer to the bottom. And as usual, I've got a just a giant mess of brewing. Now, I'm gonna throw my setup away from my tube and just kind of slow roll it back and see if the fish are a little bit deeper. So I had a couple of fish grab it on top, but nothing super consistent. So now I know I, know I got some depth here, so I'm just gonna kind of slowly paddle it along now. Maybe give it a, a twitch every once in a while. 
There we go. Fish on. Oh, it looks like a cutthroat. Nice. Already unhooked. Look at this guy. <laughs> nice. Yeah, he was not interested in being on camera. So, so James, do you know what the best part about this brand new lake is? The only thing besides woodpeckers and birds and river otters that you hear is myself. There's one other thing that I landed the first fish here. <laughs> Not that this is a competition. <laughs> oh, it is now. Fish on! <laughs> I already, already reeled it in most of the way. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, you know, I don't want to be rude and interrupt the story while I have this fish that just bit. This is, a, this is not uh, too bad. Another little cutthroat. How the heck do these guys get in here? That's, that's the big question. Zoom. Well, James and I have decided to make a move. The fishing isn't completely hot here. There's a few little fish that we got in the net, but not, not enough to spend the entire day looking for fish. So we're in a new area. So we thought, you know what? We saw a river on the map. Let's go take a look and see if there might be something to fish in on the river that's just a few miles from here. So we're gonna paddle on in, get back up to our rigs and do a little more exploring. All right, see you on the uh, next stop. All right, we're back in the Jeep. We are headed uh, to the next spot. Didn't, didn't do too bad on that lake. I mean, there's a few nice little cutthroat in there, but there weren't a lot of fish showing and we didn't want to invest any more time in that lake so we thought you know what we saw a river on the map pretty close by to where we're fishing now and we thought what the heck let's go check out that river since we're so close and see if potentially there's any fish so we're gonna drive down the road here and hopefully find a uh, route find our way to this river so all right we'll see you on the river you gotta have heart you gotta put in the time and the energy and the effort and you gotta have heart well said james well said <laughs> Let's go, there are fish to be caught. I know, we're going down this little skitter road right here. I mean, this is no more than, what, a logging trail? Like I don't, a, I don't like see a big any logging trucks going up and down there. No, but they just like somebody drove a tractor through here and that was it. But we we're trying to make our way down to the river. We crossed it at the bridge, as you saw back there. I mean, that looked really good. So we're gonna kind of bushwhack our way down here and see if we can find an access to the river. You could hear it off in the distance. At this point, we just need to find a, a route down. So let's get down to the river. It's almost like kind of boggy back here, isn't it? Yeah. I want to step in some of those there. Definitely bushwhacking. We got a vine right here. Oh, Jesus. Still got another one that's wrapped around me. I see it. I mean, this literally is no trail hiking. Slower is faster, they say. It does. Sounds like it too. It looks like there's a nice little spot where it rushes in and slows down. Right there. Yeah, and swing it. And fish that. No doubt. I just don't want to fall on my ass. I don't have trust on those flat rocks. Oh, 
Oh man, James, this looks really good. So I'm gonna tie on a Sculptzilla. I don't know, this water just looks really Sculptzilla-like. Just gotta choose which one I want. Kinda like the all green. That one looks good. Looks good. All right, we are on the move again. Uh, the river looked good, but couldn't pull up a fish probably too early in the year. That could be a really good spot though when uh, things warm up a little bit and the bugs are out in force. But there's one other lake that we're gonna stop by on the, on the way out and see if maybe there's some trout rising before we decide to throw the, uh, the tube back in. So, looks like I gotta put my seatbelt on and let's get to the other lake. See you there. So James, when was the last time that you fished a lake and then went and fished a random river and then fished another lake in the same day. That would be today. Today. <laughs> fish on. Fish on, let's go catch a fish to close the evening down. Boom. Boom. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> oh, dang it. Had him. <laughs> fish on. <laughs> I just wanna pick it up as I was trying to get over towards James. A little fish came up and grabbed it. Yeah, he's getting a little size. Oh, and he's off just like that. Dang it. So here's the best way to end a great fishing day. A lake, a river, a lake, and two IPAs. Love it. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, mm. Yummy. See you on the next one. Fish on. Beer on. Beer on. <laughs>